Hi and welcome to my channel. Now I've had quite a few questions recently come at once kind of thing about blown speakers people going in charity shops etc buying a pair of speakers or just acquired a pair of speakers maybe from a skip or something like that. They've got them home and they're not quite working as they should. Now this could be a crossover problem it could be some internal connections something like that. What's the easiest way of actually testing out to see if the speakers are working. And the best way probably is actually to take each individual driver off out the unit, out the cabinet itself, just taking the cabinet apart. And hopefully you can get to some of these drivers, usually just got uh, something like this, uh, four screws holding it in place, something like that. Uh, another driver here. They may just have four screws holding it in place. Uh, or you may be a bit unlucky, a uh, driver like this actually screws in there, it actually kind of screws in. But once you've got the unit out, or even if it's still in the actual cabinet itself, if you actually can't get it out and it's still in the cabinet, as long as you can get to the connections, we can uh, find out if that unit is actually working or not. It doesn't mean it's working properly, just to see if it's actually working, it hasn't blown and we haven't got an open circuit. So let's uh, see how we're going to do that, for instance, on this big speaker here. Uh, you may have to get yourself a piece of wire. I mean, there's a couple of ways of testing this. We're going to use a battery, a normal AA battery, 1.5 volts. And we've got a couple of multimeters here as well. Now these multimeters ain't that expensive if you haven't got one of these. And I dare say most people are not going to have one of these. It's just going out and bought a second-hand pair of speakers. Not going to have a multimeter laying around the ass. But uh, if you have, that's great. If not, they're not that expensive. You probably pick up one for five or six pounds, maybe over a local market or something like that. Maybe Amazon, eBay, something like that. They don't have to get the top of the range. Just a basic one will do. So I'm hoping you can see the reading on there. At the moment, that's reading open circuit. If we two the two connections together, you see that will give a reading and hopefully you can pick that out on camera 0.6 of an ohm and that's probably just the resistance of them wires so we're going to go on this speaker here and you're going to put one on each side and uh, these video these angles of uh, this meter and this uh, camera is not going to do me any favors here but uh, hopefully you can see that we put it on each side hopefully that's on there 5.9 ohms so that's got a measurement across the coal and that speaker there is not open circuit it's working now it doesn't mean it's working brilliantly it doesn't mean it's you know unbelievably good or anything like that it could be a fault of it still uh you know the cone could be rubbing inside so what i'm going to do is just push up and down in the cone both sides and that feels that feels okay can't hear any scratching or anything like that so that's maybe another tell time a uh, telltale sign is when you do that in and out if you can hear some rubbing or scratching that kind of thing then maybe the uh, cone isn't lined up properly and uh, maybe that uh, cone is out on its way out and it's going to be no good. So when you actually do you know, connect it up to your uh, amp, it's probably not going to sound that great. But if that's moving nice and freely, no sound, that should be okay. So that's the base driver. We're going to go on to a mid-range now. I'm going to do the battery on there as well in a minute, but I'm just going to show you with the meter. Again, just connecting the meter to both terminals. Doesn't matter which one is what. And we should get a reading. It's going to be a little bit awkward here for me to show you that. But uh, hopefully we're going to get it on there like that. And as you can see, that's reading. It's a bit all over the place because it's vibrating a little bit as I'm uh, holding it. But uh, that says, I think, 6.2, something like that. Ohms. Hopefully you can see that 5.9. It's fluctuating because I'm holding it on these. And these are dirty as well. I'm trying to hold this. If I've got a proper grip like so, that would actually... I don't know if you can actually see that. That will stay steady. And I think this meter's... Not on the way out, it's actually this connection. So if we go back on here again and try and hold a good connection there. There you go. 5.6 ohms. That's where these contacts are dirty. I'm trying to hold it on there and I'm, I'm touching a dirty bit of this contact and it's fluctuating the resistance or the impedance there. So if we hold it nice and tight, I'm really putting some grip on it now. 5.6 ohms. Hopefully you can see that and they're staying stable. So that's that. That's always always you know, best to have good clean contacts on these clips and on the spades themselves. If not, some people actually solder these wires. Uh, have a good contact. So that's that. We're going to go on to a tweeter now. And I'm going to dig this tweeter out here. Because I know this one's not working. So what would happen here, if I put the meter on both sides like that. Hold it nice and tight. Hopefully you can see that meter hasn't budged. If I lift the meter up at the same time, we'll try and hold these on there. Not the easiest job in the world. But they're on there. And that, that's open circuit. It's got no reading whatsoever. So I'm going to use another meter, that's a digital meter. So I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to come over to a normal analog meter here, where a needle sweeps across. Just makes it a little bit easier maybe to see. And hopefully you're going to see that needle move across now. 
when I'm holding the two wires together, you'll see that needle move right across the short circuit. So we're going to hold it on this speaker again, one on each side, nice and tight like that. And as you can see, that meter hasn't moved because this tweet area is actually open circuit. So that's no good. So what we're going to do, we're going to get another tweeter, which I know is definitely working. And we're going to do exactly the same on each side, one on that side, one on that side. And as you can see, that sweeps across. So that's on an analog meter. So you can do it on an analog or digital meter. You're going to get the same kind of thing on all different units. Now that's if you've got a meter. Now maybe you haven't got a meter. So we're going to turn that off and get it out of the way. And put that aside there. And what we're going to use here is an AA battery, like I say, 1.5. Don't use 9 volts like some people say, because you may blow your tweeter using 9 volts. Probably be all right with a base unit. But uh, on tweeters, etc., you're probably going to end up blowing them using uh, a 9 volt battery. So just be a bit careful. So this time we're going to listen out for a sound. We're hopefully going to hear a sound. So uh, you actually see the cone move as well on some of these bigger, looser ones. If you've got a tweeter, you're not going to see any cones move there. And if you've got a mid-range, something like this, you may be lucky just to see the outskirts of the cone just move slightly, uh, depending on which way you put the battery, either pull in or push out. If you've got it the right polarity, it'll push out the wrong polarity, it'll pull inwards. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to this. I've got my little recorder there so you can hear the noise. You should be able to pick it up on your actual microphone on the camera but uh, we're going to do it on that little unit there as well so you may need a piece of wire so obviously we want to connect both sides of this speaker there's one terminal here hopefully you can see it this is a terminal here and one terminal here they're quite a way apart and that battery is just not going to fit so we're going to put one side a little crocodile clip you may have a piece of wire or something like that you may be able to get hold of we're going to put one side to the battery doesn't matter which way around for testing purposes and we're just going to put the positive here to that. And there you go, like I say, that speaker's working. When I say it's working, like I say, we're not 100% certain, certain if it's uh, fine, you know, all pucker kind of thing. It's, it's just got, a, uh, it's not open circuit, so you should get some kind of sound out of it. And if it's working fine, you're going to get the proper sound, obviously. So what we're going to do now, is go over to the mid-range. Uh, with that there, I won't turn it over, but that cone will move in and out. You will see it quite clearly. You're not going to see it very clearly on here at all because this is a smaller cone, a tighter cone. But we, we've got a couple of wires here, so we're pretty lucky. We're going to hear the noise, and I doubt it very much if you're actually going to see anything, but just listen anyway. Now I can just see that cone moving out just on the outskirts of the rim here. You just see some movement and it's pushing outwards. And also you can hear that is an higher pitch noise. It's a different kind of driver. It gives a, it's a mid-range kind of driver, so it's going to give mid-range frequencies and it pitches upwards. That's more bass sound than a bigger unit. This is more higher pitch noise on the crackling, but there you go. Get the battery connected up properly again. There you go, that's working fine. So we're going to put that aside. We're going to connect up our tweeter, the one we know that don't work. So just bear with me while I'll put a couple of clips on that. One on that side and one on this side. I've actually took the wire out of the speaker here to do this, but uh, you can use a crocodile clip if you wanted to. You could just put one side there as we did earlier and one side on the other side here and you'd be there all day. Nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to show you using this piece of wire as well. If you use the piece of wire that was already on the speaker, say, Go one each side, nothing whatsoever. So that tweeter is no good, that's open circuit. So we're gonna put that aside. We've got a tweeter here we know that works. Now this is gonna give you even more higher pitch and it's gonna be uh, quite hard to hear. So uh, when you're doing something like this with the old battery, we're gonna use this piece of wire and I'm gonna show you just with one piece of wire as well. So you're gonna know what I'm doing anyway, but uh, we'll put one side here. I'm gonna keep very quiet and here we go. Now I'll put this unit here, but I think you can pick it up on the camera. So if we're just using one wire, for instance, just do exactly the same. One wire on that side, one wire onto the battery there, and just tap it. So there you go. That's how to test each individual unit. Now, like I say, it doesn't mean they're working fine. It just means they're not short circuit. Oh, sorry, not the open circuit. So you will get some kind of sound out of them 
hopefully. Now this could be a, a tweeter with bad uh, fluid in there with a ferro fluid that's actually gone rock hard. So it still may not sound right, even though it's working. There's something to bear in mind. Same with that driver, like I say, if that cone is getting stuck, making a scratching noise, even though you'll get some sound out of it, but it may not be you know, as it should be. But that's one way to find out if your speakers are working using uh, either an analog, a digital meter, you pick these up fairly cheap, or just using uh, an AA battery, a 1.5 volt battery. Don't start using a 9 volt battery on your tweeters because I think you end up blowing maybe some of them a bit unlucky and blow them, if, especially if you leave the battery on there too long. Because usually you've got a capacitor and a crossover uh, before, you know, the, the main kind of like uh, wattage is going to it. Uh, you've got something to kind of like uh, lessen the wattage, shall we say, lessen the power going to it. So there you go, hopefully you'll be able to uh, test your own speakers now, take them out of the cabinet. You can do that in the cabinet, I mean this could be in the cabinet, in the wooden cabinet, as long as you can get to the two contacts, uh, disconnect it all from the crossover, and we're just going straight to the actual tweeter, or mid-range, or the bass driver. So hopefully you may have found that helpful, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube people doing this, but a lot of them do use a 9 volt battery, so just be a bit careful. Until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.